Okay, turn it, turn your Bibles to Mark in chapter 10. Um, and, and I really do believe uh, that God is going to move in a significant way. And I believe breakthrough, as we've sung this morning, breakthrough is coming. And what we've sung this morning is powerful and prophetic. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's incredibly important that we understand the weight of the words that we sing, or the, really the, the potential power in the words that we sing if we're paying enough attention. When we stand in a room like this that is full of faith and full of, full of testimony and full of God breaking through, that when we come together and when we sing songs like we sang this morning, I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I'll see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Oh, the importance of coming together and being able to sing like that, right? Right, and if you can't sing, that's all right. Simon will do it for you, right? Isn't that fantastic? And you can sing and kind of be convinced that you sound that good. It's so awesome. I love church. And in this, I just want to share a few things from this scripture. And I pray that it encourages you. And I pray that your heart remains open because breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is coming. Healing is coming. Shift is coming. And I pray that we are anticipating it or we are open enough to see it. And we don't give up and we don't miss, so we don't miss out on it. Okay. So let's read in verse 46. Then Jesus reached Jericho. And as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth, say Jesus of Nazareth. When Bartimaeus had heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. Just leave that scripture up. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that, I think that's quite interesting. This is what it, the, the scripture says that Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth, he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming, but he shouted something different. He heard that someone was coming he heard Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth is coming. You know, Jesus, the carpenter guy, the guy who's been doing all the miracles. Jesus of Nazareth is coming. But what he shouted was Jesus, son of David. Now, most commentaries will say this, is that that phrase, Jesus, son of David, was an act, was an incredible act of faith. An incredible act, because what blind Bart was doing was he was connecting the dots and he was calling Jesus son of David was the name of the Messiah. Jesus son of David was the name of the, the savior of the heavens and the earth. So when blind Bartimaeus would have been growing up in his culture, he would have been hearing all the time about the savior, the Messiah, who's going to come and save Israel, Right? So he hears that Jesus is coming, but he begins to declare something different. No, my Savior is coming. No, my healer is coming. No, the one who can do miracles in my life is coming. And I think this is, it's, it's such a beautiful transaction what goes on, a transformation that goes on inside blind. But before he gets, before anything changes externally, something significant has happened internally, right? He has recognized that Jesus is in the building. Come on, who's here for you today? Who's here? Who, who is Jesus to you? Is he Jesus, kind of the guy that we sing about? And I hear about him week to week. I hear, you know, Dave's got some awesome testimonies about great things Jesus does. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard about him before. Or today... Are you sitting here and Jesus, the one who could change everything in one moment, is here right now? Come on, what Jesus do you have? What Jesus are you, are you leaning into this morning? 
what Jesus are you expecting to shift things? And this more, you know, it's A.W. Tozer that says this, the most important thing about us is what comes to our mind when we think about God. Do we think mm, far away? Seen him do great things before, not sure if he'll do it now. What comes to your mind when you think about God? When you think about Jesus, do you think close? Do you think my friend? Do you think the one I can bear my soul to? The one who was for me and not against me? The one who has come to rescue me? The one who has called me to live in greater purpose? What Jesus are you calling out to? I think there's power in what we think about Jesus. It's kind of one of the big reasons why we come together and talk about Jesus. <laughs> right? Because quite often we all have like incomplete pictures of Jesus. But when we come together and we begin to share, like this morning, my faith just rose in my spirit hearing from Pastor Dave. Is it Pastor Dave? Should be. Right? Dang. He's amazing. I love it. My just faith began, yeah, that's right. God heals. Oh my gosh, God did it for Dave. He'll do it for me. Oh, Jesus, my healer. Let's go. I'm ready, God. Right? I pray. We don't just, oh yeah, Dave got healed. Cool. But there's an incredible, there's an incredible opportunity. Come on, this morning. I pray that you call out. You call out to Jesus who was close. You call out to Jesus who removed every obstacle so that he might be in, so that you and him could be in close proximity. He removed every obstacle so we might be able to commune freely with him this morning. And whatever you need, whatever you need, over this weekend, so many of the girls were asking me, how? How? How do you have a relationship, a past like that? And go on a journey of forgiving your dad. How? Right? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, really? Apart from the fact that Jesus was just walking with me. I don't know. I don't know how you forgive your tormentor without Jesus. I don't know how your heart is meant to heal all on your own while you're in control. All I know is when Jesus has been walking with me, he has taught me compassion for the brokenness of humanity as he's shown me my own. All I know is that Jesus has shown me the humanity and the, the, the frailty and the fragility of my own father and compassion has risen within me. And I, that can't happen without Jesus. All I know is that when I felt lonely and rejected and why is my dad not around? All I know is that Jesus was there the whole time. So when it came to make decisions as a young person or even now as a mom and a wife, when it comes to making decisions, I'm not filtering them through my past. I'm filtering them through who is present. My Jesus. I pray today you cry out to Jesus, son of David, the promised Messiah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who heals, the one who frees, the one who delivers, the one who did everything just to have intimate relationship with you. Your God is close. Your God is here. And he wants to work on your behalf. The scripture carries on. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48, be quiet. Many of the people yelled at him, but he only shouted louder. I love this guy, right? Just shouting loud. If you, uh, uh, I'm a rather loud person now. I didn't used to be this loud. I was rather quiet and rather shy. And it's not like, you know, I don't actually think that I've had a personality change or anything or that all Christians should be super loud. I don't have any kind of theology like that. 
but for so much of my life I was silenced. So much of my life I had no voice. So much of my life was just pretend, make, and just pretend like everything's okay and don't tell anyone what's going on. And so the reason why I'm loud now is because I can be. <laughs> like that's it, that's it. The reason why I'm loud now, I, I would, you, the people in this crowd who know me really well, which is probably only about eight people, that's a lot of people, but I have some friends from New Zealand, Michelle and the girls, hey, and Jordan and the fam. And of course, you know, these girls on the front row know me rather well. I'm very much an introvert, right? Like, please, after this, I just want to go home and, and just, I, I want my knitting, I knit. And I would like a cup of tea, English breakfast if possible. And I just like quiet and no one talking. <laughs> Jordan's lived with me, he knows. <laughs> But the reason why I'm loud for me, it's part of me just saying thank you to Jesus for my freedom. Thank you. That, that, uh, thank you. That's why I'm loud, right? Thank you that you've given me the kind of freedom where I can just express myself. So I may as well. But I love this. He just shouted all the louder. You know, haters are going to hate. Shush, be quiet. Why are you asking God again for the breakthrough? Oh, shout even louder. Shout even louder. I love that. Okay. Uh, when Jesus heard him, he stopped. How good is that? So, when Jesus heard him, he, he stopped. Like, how good is that? Uh, when Jesus heard him, I think sometimes Jesus might not stop because we don't say anything. Right? I think sometimes Jesus doesn't stop because he's like, oh, you didn't, you didn't say anything. It, as, uh, you know, Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, like, ask and you shall receive. Sometimes we just want to receive. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. And this is probably a word of challenge. Let us not be disappointed that we aren't receiving the blessing or the fruit of seeds we never sowed. Cool. When he, when he heard, when Jesus heard him crying out, he stopped and said, tell him to come here, this blind beggar. So they called the blind man, cheer up, oh, how fickle the crowd is. They said, come on, he's calling you. In verse 50, Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up and came to Jesus. That's verse 50, if we can leave that out. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up and came to Jesus. Commentaries will say that the, it's very important that we understand the coat he was wearing uh, the coat that Bartimaeus was wearing, because he was blind, in, in Jewish culture, most of the understanding around illness like blindness, especially from birth, well, sorry, not so much from birth, but blindness kind of that's been, if you've become blind uh, through your life, you weren't born blind, uh, most of Jewish culture will say that's God's, that's a curse on you or on your family. So it's kind of like your fault. So they would have pity on you and they would give you a coat. And the coat, is, is a, it's a beggar's coat. And that coat meant that anyone in, your, in, your, in the Jewish community would know that if you're wearing this beggar's coat, you have the right to ask for charity. You are entitled. You're not pretending, but we feel sorry for you because God's cursed you. So we'll give you a coat and anyone walking by will see when you're begging and they will, they will they'll, have, they'll have sympathy for you and they'll give. And so it's very important when Jesus said, come to me, what did Bartimaeus do? He threw aside his coat. He threw aside this identification. He, <laughs> he threw aside this beggarly identification. He threw aside this feel sorry for me identification. 
he threw aside. And the the joy that Jesus is responding to him, right? And And the sheer joy of it, he threw aside the identification of silver spoon Christianity, right? I'll just sit here and have a tantrum long enough and I'll be able to manipulate God for my miracle. I love the scripture. I love all the scriptures. And I, 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 I really believe, I really believe this morning that I want a kind of fighting faith to rise in us. And it can happen this morning because one of the main reasons is you're not sitting alone in your bedroom right now. One of the main reasons is that you're sitting here among us. There's a whole group of us here. And if, if, you've, if you're going through a storm in your life, a hard time, that's okay. I brought my faith. I brought my faith this morning. That's okay. Marcella brought her faith. My faith just went through the roof. It's like, what was it, a thousand salvations? Are you kidding me? Like, what? You guys must see a thousand salvations all the time. I was like, what on earth is happening? This is people getting healed, people, thousand people getting saved as a part of the life of this church. Come on, what can God do in the room right now? And sometimes we need to understand that sometimes all the time, we need to understand the power of being in a room like this. And I encourage you, I exhort you, I implore you, throw off the beggar's coat. Throw it off this morning. And there's a crowd here saying, come on, Jesus is here. Let's go get your healing. Let's go get the breakthrough. Let's go. Let's go. Right? Oh, it's just so exciting. And I, I really do think that that's, a, uh, that's, a, that's an encouraging word. I know that might have sounded a little bit like, Ugh, like a hook in the stomach, you know? In, in, in Matthew, there's the story of the disciples in the boat and there's a storm, Right? Oh, it's, it's, it's in Mark as well. And in the Gospel of Mark, it tells the story like this, that there was the storm and Jesus was on a hill praying and the storm was, was, was raging and the disciples were afraid. And in Mark, the Gospel says that Jesus saw them and he started walking towards them to help them. Before they probably even asked for help, they were probably trying to fix the situation themselves. Sound familiar? I won't bother God with that at the moment. I'll just try and fix it myself, right? They're probably just trying to fix it themselves. Jesus sees that they're in trouble and Jesus starts walking towards them. So he walks down the hill and then he walks on the water because he can. Saves a bit of time getting on his own boat. Just I'll just walk on the water. But in, in, in the gospel of Mark, it says this, Jesus walked on the water and he intended to go past them. How cheeky is that? Come on, Jesus, you can see that we're going to drown. Don't you feel like that sometimes? Do you actually need me to say something, Jesus? But Jesus, just, don't you love that? Just, you're just drowning. Jesus is like, hey. (laughs) Right? Financial storm. Right? Relational storms in your life. <laughs> oh, I just think it's a little bit gangster, to be honest. <laughs> it's just it's like, like this, that's almost a, that's a tragic comedy. And he just, Jesus just intended to walk past until what happens? All the disciples were afraid, but Peter says, Jesus, is that you? (laughs) The 
This is what I, don't you love the Bible? This is what I love about Peter. Peter's like seeing Jesus walk on the water. And I don't know if, how this has happened, but this is how I like to think about it. Like Peter just sees Jesus walking on the water and his mind immediately is like, this is amazing. I'm not even, he didn't even, he's so stink. He didn't even ask Jesus to calm the storm. He's just like, tell me to come. I want to walk on the water too. I, w- I want to walk on the water. Let's go. <laughs> I'm so scared right now, but tell me to come, Jesus. (laughs) And I love Peter. So selfish. (laughs) Just like me. (laughs) God's doing an amazing thing. I want to do it too. I want to do it too. I want to do it. (laughs) It's so great. But don't you love that, that Jesus treats us like, like adults? Doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, just whenever you need help, just ask. I'm right here. You just, whenever you need help. Don't you love that? Don't you love that? That Jesus is like, no, no, you just ask. You just ask. I'm here. How else will we learn to trust? How else will we learn to rely on his good character? Oh, it's so, it's so strategically intelligent. Jesus intended to walk on by. How else will our humanity learn that our God will answer our call if we never call? If we just sit and complain. But I love it. You know, because he says, he says, you know, Jesus responds to faith that is childlike. Like Peter, I want to come. Don't worry about those guys, I want to (laughs) come. They can take care of themselves. Let's go, Jesus. Commentaries say that Peter had precedent to ask to walk on the water. Why? Because he had grown up hearing the stories all the time, hearing the stories of how Jesus ruled the wind and the waves, how he parted the Red Sea for Moses. And what Peter was asking is he was asking to be a part of history. He's like, I got precedent. I heard stories you could do this, Jesus. I want to be written in. I want to be famous. Let's go. I love that. The original influencer. And this morning, I pray that just like blind Bart, we throw, (sighs) has life been hard? Yes, yes. Simon, come on out, Simon. Of course, yes, it's been hard. Has it been painful? Yes. None of this is to negate or diminish the trauma and the hard things but it is to encourage you. It is for our good that we learn to say, Jesus, I need you. Because then we learn, it's not a story that we hear from someone else, but we get to learn our own story. We get to own our own faith and we get to learn when I call out, He answers. And this morning, come on, Jesus is walking on by. He knows you're in the storm. He is not ignorant to it. He has not forgotten the request. He's not forgotten the dream. He's not forgotten the difficulty. He's not forgotten. But this morning, I pray that there is a fighting faith in us that would throw off the coat, the beggar's coat, and would walk towards Jesus. Verse 51, it says this, Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? What? You know, if you've seen the notebook, it's my favorite thing. What do you want? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, what do you want? I, I don't know. I don't know. What do you want? hundred percent, I feel like Jesus does that with me all the time. Right? When I'm just like mad at my husband. What do you want, Esther? I, 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 I don't, I, pick, pick up his clothes. <laughs> right? Pick his clothes up off the floor. And as the words are coming out of my mouth, I'm realizing that's not what I want. 
well, what do I really want? Underneath all of that, all frustration or whatever's going on, what do I really want? It was probably been the same thing that I've wanted my whole life. And you, I think everyone, it's in humanity to want this. I just want to be seen and noticed and treasured and listened to, right? And then I say that to God, right? Like, make my husband do that. And God will speak to me. And he will say so very gently, but I'm pretty sure I hear a little chuckle every time. And I know I hear God say, I treasure you. I see you. I hear you. And with that, I stand up and I pick up the clothes. <laughs> What do you want? Yeah, yeah, come on. I love it. There's women in here like, feel you, girl. <laughs> it's hard. But really this morning, what, what do you want? And I think how we respond to that question is, is very telling. Imagine if Bartimaeus had responded differently. What do you want? Well, Jesus, I'd, I'd love to be able to have caregivers to look after me in my blindness so I can keep living by charity and never have to actually do anything. But instead, he asks for something that we think is rather basic, but I think it's very brave. Jesus, I want to see. Do you know, as soon as that happened, as soon as blind Bartimaeus could see, he became a healthy Jewish man that then had to take responsibility, had to own his living and earn his living, had to, had to stand up and walk confidently in his healing and be healed. It means he couldn't walk in the entitlement of charity. And I think today some of us prefer and I know this is challenging to hear, but it is the truth sometimes. Some of us prefer to be broken. It's not comfortable, but we prefer it because it gives us an excuse and it gives us the comfort of not actually having to own our healing and not actually have to walk through or work through what it is to be free. So really this morning, what do you want? What do you want? If you want your freedom in Jesus' name, why don't you stand to your feet? I really believe that God is going to free people this morning. That where people have been blinded, paralyzed, in a storm, in the storms of life, that really God is going to bring freedom to you. God's going to bring sight to you here in the room. <clears throat> Lastly, Bartimaeus responds and says, my rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see. <sighs> Listen, instantly, the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. If you were wondering what to do with your freedom, follow Jesus down the road. <laughs>